Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Weekly Stoke. I'm so excited to have Seth Ehrlich on here today to talk about the SOS Outreach Program. And I'm hoping you guys had a great week last week as we talked about the Brass Foundation and took in a lot of super important information on snow safety. So as we're heading in a completely different direction this week, I think it's important to bring up how us as skiers and the sink community can all be more aware of ways we can give back and share the sport of skiing that we all know and love so much. So I'm so excited to have Seth on today to learn a little bit more about this program that he's been running and what we can do to be active community members. So hi, Seth. Hi. So just to get started, what is the SOS Outreach Program? And what is it aimed to do for kids and teens in their like incorporation to winter sports? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So Seth Ehrlich, Executive Director of SOS Outreach. And uh, I mean, here at SOS Outreach, we believe that every child deserves the opportunity to thrive. And we use the power of the outdoors, uh, power of skiing and snowboarding to build confidence in kids uh, as they master a skill that they never thought they could. Uh, the kids who we work with are not native to skiing and snowboarding and they didn't think that the mountains belonged to them. And so we bring them into the sport and then use the sport to build really strong relationships between adults and kids, and then also build a community between the kids so that they have this support system that they go back to. Um, what's unique about our model is that our programs are progressive. We start in fourth grade, go all the way through high school graduation. We've now expanded that into an alumni network. And all of our programs are centered on three core pillars. And those are the outdoor adventure to promote engagement, uh, adult mentorship to promote belonging, and a values-based community engagement to promote self-determination and, and self-advocacy. And so you mentioned this mentorship program that you basically are creating these relationships for the kids. How do you get the kids involved? How are they brought into the program? And is there a way that someone could join if they were interested? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a core component of our structure and success is that we're recruiting kids through partnerships with youth agencies and schools. And so SOS Outreach, we are uh, founded in, in, in the Vail Valley uh, on Vail Mountain in 1993. We've now expanded to 15 locations that range from Seattle to Detroit. So through the Cascades, the Sierras, the Rockies, and up into Midwestern Hills, uh, where we have programs. And we're working with youth agencies and schools to recruit kids who will benefit from those building blocks. Who, who, who are the kids who are on the bubble of not succeeding in school? Who are the kids who need a support system to address challenges that they're facing either at school or at home? And so there's 250 uh, school partners and that would be you know here in the Vail Valley, all schools in Eagle County School District we're working with. And we'll identify a teacher and so if anybody wants to get involved, uh, they can reach out to us. We'll find that school or youth agency in their community and we'll plug them in through that, that, that connection. Wow, that's really incredible. And it sounds like you've really grown a lot over the past couple of years. And so with that growth, it seems like it's been pretty deliberate with access to mountains, but do you see yourself growing more in the future? Do you wanna provide more opportunities for these kids and teens? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I mean, our, our uh, continued driving point is how can we provide the opportunities for all youth involved in the organization to thrive? And in the past year, particularly when there were a lot of questions of what could we still do? Are mountains gonna be open? Are we gonna be able to run our traditional programs and our traditional mentoring program? It was then that we saw our real opportunity to, to, to expand the organization. And that's now developed. We created this whole alumni network where we're working with kids who are in college um, or in their first career or uh, 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 multiple years out of how we can provide resources to them, connect them back into our programs, um, help them with their own career development. And so we're really focused on extending our runway, extending our career connections so that we can connect more of our program graduates back into careers in the industry, on mountain, within organizations like SYNC. I mean, our partners who have great positions where our kids would thrive, you know, and, and they're looking for kids who have the skills that we have and, and, and really plugging them in to make a change. And there's 80,000 kids who have gone through SOS to date. That is incredible. Holy smokes. Not only just the community <laughs> aspect and the networking, but bringing that many kids to skiing is just amazing. And I think for me, the biggest part is this is a sport that we all love and our sync community loves. 
And so ways to give back to that community and make sure that people have the opportunity to try and to get involved into the sport is something super meaningful to most skiers as we're going through this path. So this may be a more silly question, but what happens when the kids want to continue skiing? Like skiing is a very expensive sport, as we all know. And so the equipment, the setup, the logistical aspect of it, once they move through this SOS outreach program, can they still have access to continue skiing or is it really you pull into the program and that's kind of your day excursion type activity? Yeah, uh, I mean, absolutely. It, it is an expensive sport and we have identified opportunities for how to overcome it. And so how do we engage? I mean, our goal, again, we're starting in fourth grade, taking kids all the way through high school graduation at a minimum, where they have all the resources that they need to get on snow. So we're working with mountains for the mountain access, whether that's lift tickets in our introductory program, or it progresses into season passes. Um, it starts at rental equipment, then it goes into the season purchase programs. So our kids are able to purchase gear for $100. And they then own the gear for next season, they can trade it back in and get the upsize. Um, we work with a, or a lot of organizations for the jackets, pants, goggles, gloves, hats. Thank you to sync for your contribution to that to keep our kids warm and dry. Um, so it's all in how the industry, the SOS model is how to bring the whole industry together so that there isn't a no. There's always an opportunity for them to continue. And now as we're developing this alumni network, we're taking the next steps with that because our kids can continue this passion through working in the industry, whether that's full-time, part-time, seasonal, there's so many opportunities for them to complete their own personal development at the same time as continuing this passion. So the community aspect, as we've already talked about a bit, is super important to what it seems like is making this program really thrive. So what can members of the ski community do to help SOS and any other person that's trying to provide skiing to uh, young kids who may not have the opportunity, how can they give back? How can they get involved, whether or not it's maybe helping with lessons or volunteering some time or donating old gear? Yes, all of the above of what you just said. The most, it, check out sosoutreach.org, check out our social channels. The most significant thing that the SYNC community can do is, is to get involved. And that may mean, you know, in their local community, we have over 750 adults who are involved in our programs every single year to make them run. Those are season long mentors to one day volunteers. So we need your help. Gear, jackets, pants, goggles, gloves, hats, skis, snowboards, bindings, boots, whatever you have, we can use it for our programs. Um, amplify our message. I mean, what's happening through our programs? We're using the sports that you love to, to, to ensure that kids graduate high school and go on to a strong future. And you can help amplify the message and being a part of the SYNC community, you are a part of our community through the support that SYNC is already providing to us. Yeah, no, it's very cool to see that lessons that we're learning participating in the sport can also be shared in different ways. And having those lessons and those growth moments, I think is super important as we move forward and are working on the next generation. And who knows, you might have the next fastest ski racer in your midst. <laughs> I'd be excited to see. It's fun. Uh, <laughs> and so just outside of that a little bit, as we talked about mountains, is it just stuck to skiing and snowboarding or are, we, are there any other outdoor activities or sports that SOS Outreach really tries to bring to the kids as well? Yeah, so uh, we were founded uh, Mountain Access Winter Sports. Uh, that's still 75% of what we do. Uh, we did extend though, uh, we're, we're uh, through individual recreation. So hiking, camping, rock climbing, uh, for summer activities, all with a focus of how we can expand the community that we're providing to our kids. It's not just a winter activity. It's not just a winter experience. It's not just a winter time that they need this community and the mentorship. So it's using the so winter sports, and then we extend that into the summer activities through individual recreation. It's incredible. I really was so excited to find out that I could do this interview today because it is just an amazing program that you're building here. And it's been incredible to just learn about it. And I'm excited to share this with the entire community because I think everybody else will be just as excited as I am. But so it was amazing to have you on Seth. Thank you so much for your time. And I'm really looking forward to seeing some SYNC athletes, just some SYNC community members, maybe participate in some upcoming events in any way they possibly can in the area if possible. But thanks again for your time and to our listeners. Thank you for coming to this week's Weekly Stoke and I'll catch you all next week.